Western arts are the literary, performing, and visual arts of Europe and regions that share a European cultural tradition. The first evidence of human art is found predominantly in Spain and France. This period of human history is called the prehistoric period. Prehistoric is used to mark the time when there were no written records or verbal accounts of man's activities, that is between 80,000 BC and 5000 BC. Prehistoric art is the global and proliterate origins of human artistic achievements, the first attempts of which appear to have been made about 35,000 BCE in the form of African rock art. It refers to paintings, engravings, sculpture, and other forms of art which were done in the earlier stage of man's cultural development when there were no written records. It began in 30,000 BC and ended in 5000 BC. There were four eras during the prehistoric age. The first one is the Paleolithic Era, also known as Old Stone Age. Humans were unaware of methods of cooking and agriculture. The main occupation of those times was food gathering and hunting. Everything man used was made of stone in this time like shelter and hunting tools. Mesolithic Era also known as Middle Stone Age. Humans started using bows and arrows for hunting of animals. Hunting of small animals like fish began using sharp tools, which are also known as microliths pointed. Neolithic Era is the last phase of the Stone Age. A remarkable change in the human civilization is marked in this age. Cultivation of plants and domestic animals led to human civilization. Improvement in tools and other equipment was also observed. Mad bricks houses were made during this period. Metal Age marks the end of the Stone Age. Metal Age is broadly categorized into two ages, and they are First one is Bronze Age. Bronze itself is harder and more durable than other metals available at the time, allowing Bronze Age civilization to gain a technological advancement. This age was the first witness in Egypt. Most commonly used metals in this period were copper and bronze. And the last one is the Iron Age. In the 19th century, use of iron increased and hence rise of the Iron Age. This age is the last age of the Three Age system. This age brought an end to the Bronze Age. Weapons were also made of iron in this era. Cro Magnon peoples from 35,000 BCE were considered to be the world's first artists. They lived in caves when it was cold, hunted animals for food, clothing, tools, and shelter. The prehistoric men lived in caves and natural shelters. The women gathered wild crops and the men gathered wild honey and hunted large animals. They used the flesh of animals for food, the skin and furs for clothing, and the fat for fuel in lamps made of stone or clay. Some of the animals they hunted were elephant, bison, reindeer, bear, horse, bull, and even rhinoceros. In 1879, a Spanish archaeologist Marcelino Sanz de Sautulua and his daughter Maria set out to explore a cave in the hillside of Altamira, not far from their home. De Sautulua took a serious interest in finding out about the prehistoric past. Little Maria was small enough to see into the narrow opening of the cave in the backyard, and what she saw changed history. Maria had become the first modern human to set eyes on the first gallery of prehistoric paintings ever to be discovered, and what she saw was the painting of bulls in the cave which is now known as the Great Hall of Bulls. Next topic is cave paintings. So, cave paintings um, these are a form of prehistoric art that involves the creation of images on the interior walls of caves and rock shelters. Uh, 
in early, uh, early humans use natural pigments such as ochre, charcoal, and minerals to create cave paintings. And cave paintings uh, were made through various techniques like fingers, hands, and rudimentary brushes made from animal hairs or plant fibers. So we have example here. This, uh, the Great Hall of Pools. Next is Painted Gallery. Next is Lateral Passage. Chamber of Engravings. Shaft of the Dead Man. Chamber of the Fuens. And the Main Gallery. Now we move to sculptures. Sculpture is a form of visual art that involves creating 3D objects by carving, modeling, casting, and assembling materials. Sculptures can be made from a wide range of materials including stone, wood, metal, clay, glass and even found objects so we have here examples first is the seated female this one of few sculptural objects found in the region of western asia next is Um, smithing god wearing an Egyptian atef crown. This figure depicts a deity associated with the prehistoric Canaanite culture of the Levant area. Next is double-headed figure. This was produced or made by the Valdivia culture in Ecuador. Next is the Hippopotamus amulet. This one, this one was made in Egypt during the pre-dynastic period, Nakada II. The purpose of this pre-dynastic sculpture of a pre pregnant hippo. A rare feature of such figurines of this period and region is still unclear to historians. Even so, most feel the amulet was most likely either a symbol of fertility to be used within the context of death. Next is... Marble female figure. This was made by the Cycladic culture in the final Neolithic period. The Cyclades, a group of Grecian islands, served as a home to the people of the early Cycladic culture and a rich array of mineral resources, including some of the world's most pre precious marble. Next is for this. the Dogu. Dogu made in Japan during the final Jomon period. Clay figurines of both female and animals were common in this period of modern clay, modern day Japan. Called Dogu, many of these statuettes depicted a female figure stylized to emphasize the hips and breasts. Next is the horse-shaped brooch. 
This was made in the Central Europe by the Celtic culture. Next is this um, the plaque. This was made by the Hongshan culture during the Neolithic period. Um, because contemporary historians had known little, no, little to nothing about the Hongshan culture of Northeast China until recently, there's still much to be learned about the about this artifact and its purpose. Currently, due to the hole of the top center of the object, some believe it may be a type of ornament. Next is this terracotta statuette of woman with bird face. It was made by the Cypriot culture in the late Cypriot second period. Cypriots based in modern-day Cyprus, produce a bevy of imaginative ceramic objects, from zoomorphic vessels to the hollow figurines such as this one. Especially in the Bronze Age, uh, a reminder of fertility for this culture, these female figurines with emphasized genitals were particularly common and in this period were often placed in tombs. Next is and lastly the bird figure. The uh, this one was made in the Mount Hagen region of modern Papua New Guinea. Through it is certain this and other similar sculptures were created by a prehistoric culture once located in the highlands of New Guinea, little else is known about the object of the people who made it. Because neither this nor any similar stone statuettes have been excavated in controlled archaeological circumstances, they are unable to be dated within the region's 400 years of prehistory. Now let's move on to Stonehenge, dating back around 2000 BCE. Stonehenge is a prehistoric monument located in Wiltshire, England. It is one of the most iconic and mysterious archaeological sites in the world. While its construction likely began around 3100 BCE, the most significant phase of building occurred around 2000 BCE. Stonehenge underwent several stages of construction and modification over the centuries. Its purpose and significance remain the subject of much debate among archaeologists and scholars. Some key features and aspects of Stonehenge around 2000 BCE. We have first construction pieces, two blue stones and sarsen stones, three alignment and astronomy. 4. Cultural and religious significance 5. Community effort and 6. Ongoing mysteries So, when we talk about Stonehenge, there are two categories under Stonehenge, which are Stationary Art and Portable Art When we talk about Stationary Art, paints were manufactured from combinations of minerals, ochres, burnt bone meal, and charcoal mixed into mediums of water, blood, animal fats, and tree saps. Cave paintings contain far more non-figurative art, meaning many elements are symbolic rather than realistic. Here are some examples of stationary art. We have this, 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 and also this one. Now let's move on to portable art. What is portable art? Portable art. 
These things were carved from stones, bone, or, ad or antler or modeled with clay. Most of the portable art from this time was figurative, meaning it depicted something recognizable, whether animal or human, human being. Here are some examples of portable art. We have this, also this, this one, and this one. Now, what are the key differences of these two? Stationary art and portable art. Let me tell you this. When we talk about stationary art, it is something permanently situated in a specific location. Uh, some examples of this are murals, big sculptures, and frescoes. Also, it was also said that when, we, when it comes to stationary art, it is non-figurative, meaning it is more on symbolic, or we can say that it is more on something that symbolizes deeper than its actual appearance. However, when we talk about portable art, it is designed to be easily moved or carried. Some examples of these are paintings, small sculptures, uh, basically uh, small stone sculptures. Also it, was said and it, also, it was said that when it comes to portable art, it is figurative, meaning it depicts something that is recognizable. For example, at first, uh, at first glance, you could easily recognize that, oh, this sculpture is portraying something like in an animal form or in a human being form or maybe also both. The artworks of ancient Egypt have fascinated people for thousands of years. Prehistoric Egypt and predynastic Egypt spanned the period from the earliest human settlements to the beginning of the early dynastic period around 3100 BC, starting with the first pharaoh, Narmer for some Egyptologists, or Aha for others, with the name Menes also possibly used for one of these kings. The Egyptian techniques and their art would inspire those of other cultures up to the present day. Early Egyptian art was functional and created for a practical purpose, while later art was intended for aesthetic pleasure. When an Egyptian artist painted a figure, every body part was shown from its recognizable angle. As we can see from the slide, the face is shown in profile, except for the eye, and the body which has shown head-on, but the arm and the leg is twisted back into the profile. The sizes of every figure in ancient Egyptian art is highly symbolic. Pharaohs, for example, were the largest figures in any paintings, symbolizing their dominance and power. The smallest figures were usually the peons, the little people. Egyptian artists covered the limestone walls of tombs with a fine layer of plaster. The main colors used were red, yellow, black, blue, gold, and green, taken from mineral pigments that can withstand strong sunlight without fading. Use of color is highly suggestive. Men who work outside were often red, and indoor workers, while women and indoor workers were painted yellow. So this convention of compound view comes up many times in Egyptian arts, and it is important for us to study it. Scientists and archaeologists has debated the meaning or purpose of the arts and cave paintings of the prehistoric period. Some said that the cave arts are created by shamans that go deep into the cave and communicate with the animal in the spirit world. Some says that the cave paintings is some sort of early alphabet as some figure is repeated over and over again. While we may never know the true meaning or purpose of prehistoric art, it is clear that our early ancestors is capable to do artwork as their mind and body are evolving as the world they live in is changing. <laughs>